Hello and welcome to this webinar today. Um, today I'm pleased to present all functions that are relevant for the topic documentation of applications and projects um, via scenarios. And I will also show you some tips and tricks today. The aim of this webinar today is to show you all functionalities that play a significant role in the context of target group orient oriented um, documentation and also holistic documentation. So the aim is to show you how to create scenarios, how to build them in a sensible way and which other templates and functions are relevant. So let's start with the webinar. So first of all, um, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Alexander Kolmogorzev and I'm working in the product management of the Doku Performer at Blue Intelligence. Let's take a closer look at the agenda of this webinar. So next I will give you a quick overview of the supported components and the modules and add-on tools of the Doku Performer. The aim is um, to create a common ground regarding the wording and the terms that will often be used in this webinar. And um, then I will present you the main part of this webinar, so how to make relevant information visible in the Doku Performer and how to create different, different variants of documentation for different target groups. Um, then I will give you a short summary. And last but not least, I will finish this webinar with some important notes. So let's start with the presentation. Okay, so this was the quick overview. Now we um, will talk about the Doku Performer. So as I said, um, first the general overview. Um, um, yes, let's have a look at Doku Performer and the components and modules it supports. So the components, um, as you may know, um, the Doku Performer um, is not only a BW tool anymore, it also supports BO, HANA, and BPC. And um, as I said, you will um, you will get an email with the presentation, then you can um, check all of the supported entity types, um, as you see here in this on, on the slide. And um, another tip is we have a user manual online. You will also find a link in this presentation, and in the user manual you can um, find um, a definition of all supported of all supported entity types. Um, the next point um, are the modules. So um, the basic module is the documentation module. With this module you have the possibility to create automated um, automatically technical documentation. And um, then we have the commenting. With commenting you can um, yeah you have the possibility to, to comment sub-entities. You can record professional knowledge, definitions, and requirements. You can merge those comments with the technical information of um, sub-entities. And another point are the scenarios. I will show you the scenarios today. It's uh, one of the major um, topics in this webinar. Um, yes, then we have the analysis. It's a collection of functions that simplify workflows and the maintenance of systems. And yeah, you have the possibility to get a good overview of your entities. Um, we have a lot of housekeeping functions if your system is growing so that you can stay on top of things. And um, all in all, it supports um, sub-users to solve everyday problems in the sub-business and analytics area. The last module is um, the modeling. Um, with modeling, you have the possibility to um, import sub-entities into the Doku Performer. For example, in InfoCube, you can um, change the name of the technical name of the of, of entities. Um, you can also transform old um, BW entities like DSO or InfoCube to RDSO to advanced DSOs, and um, afterwards you can um, export them back into the same system or into another system. This is a really important topic because of the um, because currently a lot of uh, companies um, execute a migration, a BW for HANA migration. And if you want more information regarding this tool, we have um, you, we have an English YouTube video uh, at our YouTube channel, and you can check this video. We have also two add-on tools. It's Data Lineage. Data Lineage is um, an add-on tool for the analysis module. You can create a mapping of all info objects and fields up to the data source, and the results are displayed in an Excel table. It's possible for BW info provider, for HANA objects, and ABAP CDS data definitions. 
The last add-on tool is translations. With translations, you have the possibility to change the descriptions of your sub BW entities, and you can then um, export the changes into your system with Duco Performer and write them on transport requests. Okay, so this was the quick overview. Now we will um, talk about the scenario-related functions and tips how to use them. So first, I would like to um, start um, about general questions of why documentation is important in the sub-business analytics area. Um, according to this quote by uh, Panopto, 85% of employees agree that receiving and sharing information is essential if productivity should increase. So, in despite of this knowledge, there is rarely documentation in practice, and there are many reasons for this, uh, which I would like to present you on the next slide. So, as we noticed in the past, there are three types of companies. So, companies um, that don't document at all, companies that document because of internal or legal obligation, and we also saw companies that document because they recognize the benefits. And um, there are a lot of benefits if you document, and there are also many reasons why companies should document, because uh, maybe you need to fulfill internal or external requirements, if you want to make changes transparent and understandable, um, if you want to protect the know-how of employees, um, if you want to inform the business, for example, if um, the business asks you how the key figure, um, how the key figures, how the key figure was originally defined. Um, or if you want to perform approvals, so if you, for example, want to record the state after an implementation. And um, if you create a documentation, you need to um, you need to take care that you um, that you also follow the criteria of good documentation. So the documentation uh, should be correct. Um, the documentation should be available. So if it's necessary, everyone should know where the documentation is located. It should also be understandable for each target group. So in terms of language or in terms of the level of detail, the documentation should be up to date and um, the document should also be uh, searchable. So if you want to search for an info object or for an entity, it should be easy to find it. Okay, and um, these are the criteria of good documentation and it's really hard to create uh, such a documentation because um, there are no substandard tools except of the metadata repository, but um, yeah, this tool is really, really old and um, you can't uh, create Word documentations, the UI is really bad, so there are no um, real um, alternative. And um, if you want to create a manual documentation, then um, the effort and cost increases rapidly. And um, the problem is also that every employee um, created his own documentation with, it, uh, with, um, with his own style, individual style. So one employee maybe uses screenshots, a lot of screenshots. This is also not so good because um, it's hard to search through a documentation with a lot of sc um, screenshots. And um, the problem is then that you can't compare the um, documentations. So there are a lot of difficulties and there are other challenges. For example, after, the, um, after you create the documentation, um, the technical information is already outdated by, um, by the changes um, and the fixes. Another point is that, all, that it's almost impossible to create um, a documentation across the systems which maps the complete area of sub-business analytics, um, for example, BW, BOHANA, and BBC, and maybe some other third-party entities. And um, the last point is that your documentation um, is only helpful for one certain target group. So it's really hard to create a documentation um, which can help um, all other departments and the business and the IT. Yes, so these are the challenges. So the question is um, now, how to reflect all the relevant information in the Duco Performer. So to find, um, to talk about this, um, we should first um, identify in advance what information actually exists on which levels. So we have different information on different levels. So um, first of all, we have um, on the first level the departments. So for example, finance, logistics, log logistics services and purchasing departments. 
um, this department can have uh, multiple applications, for example, um, like a reliability reporting or non-conformance costs. Um, the application um, can uh, have has sub sub applications on the next level like supplier special plant reporting and um, the objects represents the smallest unit of information so for example cost can calculation for employee represented as an um, on a composite provider for example and um, the next um, problem is that you have um, three um, that, that there are different components so as i mentioned before you have bw you have bo you have hana and you have um, third-party systems. So some of these levels are automatically displayed in the Duco Performer and some information need to be rebuilt first. So for example, with the help of scenarios or the third-party component, I will show you all of this. And um, a small spoiler, it is possible to display all this information in Duco Performer by exporting and by um, yeah, creating a scenario. So let's first look at the lowest level, the level of the objects. So the BW, BO and HANA entities are synchronized automatically and we recommend to use the sync tool to perform um, those synchronizations in the background. I will show you the sync tool um, in the live demo. Um, further entities from third-party systems um, must be created manually with um, the third-party component, as I said before, and um, you need to think carefully about which elements should be created and be part of the documentation um, to be able to create a holistic documentation. For example, if you have a Tableau report and you want to explain how this is related to an HANA composite provider. Um, the business and technical information can be attached um, to objects in the form of comments. I already mentioned this in the, um, during the explanation of the commenting module. And um, each entity type uses its own comment template. So for each object type, you have to think carefully about which information should be attached to the object. And um, you can also document entities individually. So one entity. Okay, so let's have a look um, at the mention points in the Doku Performer itself. So this is the initial view of the Doku Performer. And first of all, you can select on the left side here the system and also the components. So you have here all your licensed BW systems. Here you see all your BO systems and HANA systems if you license them. Um, and also here you see the third party component, which I mentioned before. Okay, so on the left side, you see all the supported um, BW entity types. And if you, for example, click on this multi-provider, you see all the multi-providers that are synchronized. And with synchronized, I, um, I mean that you first have to um, execute a synchronization um, um, in the Doku Performer to see, to make all your entities visible in the Doku Performer. You can find the synchronization here um, in the ribbon sub-integration and then sub-synchronization. And um, here you can specific, um, specifically um, select all the relevant entity types. So for example, the workbench entities, the info objects, reporting entities. You can also select the tables and then you can um, select specific tables um, we synchronize a lot of ABAP stacks and, um, for example, function modules. You can um, then, for example, um, document reports, classes, um, and also BPC. And um, um, if, if, you, if, you, if you create a new um, entity, then you also have to synchronize the Doku Performer because, for example, if you synchronized, um, if you executed the synchronization yesterday, and if you then change a setting in a HANA composite provider, we will um, consider this changed setting in the if you create a new documentation um, because this entity was um, already synchronized before. But if you create, for example, a new HANA composite provider, we won't consider this um, composite provider and we won't um, display it in the Doku Performer. And um, so you always have to um, um, execute the synchronization and we recommend to synchronize daily to see then um, all the created objects. And um, 
the think synchronization can be performed automatically in the background so uh, you don't have to worry uh, about the execution of the synchronization anymore and this can can be done uh, with the sync tool so the sync tool um, you can install the sync tool um, also during your um, Docker Performer installation, and you can find the sync tool in your installation folder. So here you can, first of all, um, um, yeah, execute a login for the relevant systems, and then you can um, set, schedule all the, um, all the systems when they have to synchronize. So maybe, for example, this system should be synchronized daily, This the next system should be synchronized every second day. So you can um, specifically decide um, the date of the synchronization for each system. Uh, this synchronization is executed via, um, via services, um, Microsoft services, and um, you can install them with the sync tool here, you just need to um, open the sync tool as an administrator. Okay, back to the Doku performer. So after the synchronization, you see all of the um, all of your entities in the Doku performer. And um, what I can do then is, for example, I can um, I can comment an entity. For example, this HANA composite provider, as you can see, here is a comment bubble. So that, this means that the this HANA composite provider was um, was commented in the past. So you see here is a comment, and you also see um, that there's a chapter st structure. So this chapter structure is defined in the common template. And um, each entity type has um, its own common template. And um, you can find all the common templates of each entity types here if you um, open the context menu and click on edit common template. So you have to ask the question um, which information is relevant for each object type. Um, which implicit knowledge which is stored in the minds of the employees, em, 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 employees should be additionally attached on a respective um, object on respective object types and therefore you can um, create with this common templates a framework for each relevant entity type so that every employee knows where he can store the relevant information in the docker performer and I created here some examples for example um, this HANA composite provider we have the chapter objective, usage of joints, um, yeah, and so on. These are the relevant information um, for us. And you can edit this comment template if you click here on edit, and then you can add this comment items to the comment um, template. The technical name is language independent, so here you can just enter um, a technical name. And in the description, the description is important because if you should um, think about the relevant question, uh, the relevant languages, and then you should um, uh, maintain the description in the relevant languages. For example, English and then German. <clears throat> Okay, so this is the way how you can create those um, common templates for each um, entity type. So you can select here, you can see here all the supported entity types. And for example, if I search for, yes, no, transformation, then you see here, for example, we have the objective, we have the routines, we have um, formulas, the rule groups, and you can also add um, additional, uh, you can also add default um, content to um, a chapter. This content will then be um, always displayed if a user try to comment an entity of this entity type. As you see, this chapter is always so. If I, for example, open the chapter of another HCPR, then you will also see this structure. The next thing I can do is I can create a documentation. So I could now just click here on create documentation and um, then uh, select here the format and then create um, a really detailed documentation of this HANA composite provider. We will talk about this um, later. So I will open the presentation once again. And um, just an important point, um, in the Docker Performer, there are many ways to make quick wins and to generate quick full, um, uh, quickly helpful results in the form of analysis or documentation of individual objects. 
But if you want to profit even more from the full potential of um, the Docker performer, you have to think about certain questions and do some pre preparatory work in advance. So the question is, what information is it worth to be documented? Um, on which information level is this information located? Is it on the object level um, or on the... Um, if it's on the object level, then um, you can probably just um, just create a technical documentation in the Docker performer of one entity. If not, you should add further information in form of a comment, as I showed to you. And at the same time, you need to um, think about a good structure um, of the chapter, a good um, and helpful chapter chapter structure and you can do this with the common templates as I showed you before. If the information is in one of the upper levels it can be visualized using the scenarios and this is what I want to show you next. <clears throat> so um, the scenario folder so I will everything I um, will um, mention now I will also show you in the Doku performer and um, the scenario folder structure can, for example, represent the departments. So, um, and for example, the scenario can um, represent um, the application. But if the application, of course, is too complex, a scenario can also represent also a sub-application. The folder can uh, be the application. Um, we, we recommend um, that you first reflect the generally valid information in the scenario. So, for example, you start to build your scenario and firstly you add um, um, the chapter structure, for example, or, um, for example, some introductions or overviews. So, something that you um, can reuse in other um, scenarios because um, you can transform a scenario into a scenario template and you can reuse it for upcoming projects. So, um, if you then start inserting um Yes, if you then um, open the scenario um, based on the scenario template, then you don't need to add this content um, again into the scenario. But I will show you all of this um, in the live demo. Um, then you can start in inserting application-specific elements into the scenario, such as application objects or other information that, um, that spe specifically describes the application. And um, an important note um, from the next release, um, which will be released um, next month, it will be possible to create scenarios automatically and um, generate um, them in the background at a certain scheduled time. So this will be possible. And um, at the same time, we're running on a proof of concept to see whether it's possible to export this, um, um, this uh, documentations to a central location like a wiki system and currently we're focusing on Confluence. This is just a um, little hint for you. If this is important for you, you can also ask some questions or you can um, just, um, we will also write you an email if the new release is available. Okay, so I've talked a lot about scenarios now. Um, so um, we should now uh, have a closer look at what you can do with these scenarios and how to build them. So first of all, here you can see the content of such, such a scenario. So you can, um, you can integrate existing documentations, for example, which were created in Word, um, guides, all the documentations of applications. Um, you can also um, integrate technical documentations of these objects for example, um, a query and the technical documentation and all the um, um, related reporting elements. And last but not least, you can also um, maintain all the object and, and integrate the comments that were made on this specific entity. And this is our solution, the scenarios. So um, what's the general definition of the scenarios? Um, the scenarios can be used for extensive and structured documentation if it's necessary to describe a project and application or general connections between systems. So you can build a scenario step by step to get a, a bundled documentation. Um, the inserted objects can be combined uh, with images, text elements, list elements and further word files. And in the last step, um, you can export the scenario to a Word, PDF or HTML file. This is, for example, a, a table of content of an exported scenario. And um, all of these uh, chapters are, um, are created
created in the Duco Performer itself. So this was something I will show you now. This was a structure item. And I will show you how you can build such a scenario in Duco Performer now in the live demo. The first question, of course, where can I find the scenarios? Um, you can find them here in documentation and click on scenarios, or you can find them here in commenting and then scenarios. The next thing you can do is you can create your own um, specific folder structure. So this, this is what I mentioned before. You can, for example, say, okay, here are my departments, logistic, purchasing. And as I said, a folder can reflect a department. Or as in this case, in this case, a folder reflect a certain application. And then I have here a sub application. Okay, the next thing is um, how can I create the folders? This is also important. So on this, you can click on this button, new folder, and then you can create a new folder on the first level. If you want to create subfolders, then you can open the context menu of the, um, of the folder and click on create subfolder. If, you, um, if everything is fine and you have your perfect um, folder structure, then you, can, then you can create scenarios. And you can create scenarios with this button, new scenario, and then you can, for example, define a technical name. This is also a language independent technical name. And um, the more important, um, um, the more important text field is this one, the description, because we will show, we will display this description in the scenarios, in the document itself. So this is really important that you define the description for the relevant languages. And here, once again, think about all the relevant languages because this will really help you um, afterwards if you create, um, if you export the scenario. So this is just a test. So it will be test and I create it. So this will be a blank scenario. I open it and then you see this view. So what can I do? then I can insert these structure items to the, um, to the workspace. So this can be done with um, drag and drop. So I can, for example, insert this um, rich text element into the scenario. I can, um, I can add a description. So this is also what you will see in the, in the document itself. So if I, for example, say this is my first chapter, chapter one, and for example, this is my second chapter, chapter two. And as I said, you can, for example, just the technical name is not that important. You can just add the same name for it here. And then you can, for example, create sub chapters. So this is sub chapter 1.1, for example. So this is how you can create a structure. And these will be the chapters of your document after the, ex after the export. And let's, um, let's uh, have a closer look on the structure items. So first of all, we see the rich text items. So with, this, um, with, the, with the help of this um, item, you have the possibility to, um, to, um, to create text elements in your document. You can, um, this text element offers formatting options. You can add tables, images, hyperlinks, and more. And you should use this kind of um, structure item if you um, want to add all of those um, mentioned content or if you want to format the content that you added to the scenario uh, to the chapter because this is an important point you can you can um, open um, the context menu of this chapter and then you can click on show content and then you can add here all the mentioned things like Text, as I said, you can format the text. Um, you can also add, as I said, an image. You can add links and tables. You can save this, and this will be then the content of the first chapter if you export the document. Okay, then we have the image. You can also insert the images, add the image um, into this um, into the workspace, and um, yeah use this item if you only want to insert an uncommon image into the structure and on, onto, um, on the first level of this scenario. 
then we have two um, text um, boxes. So first of all, the, the simple text box. So here you can add unformatted one-line texts. Um, you can um, also create so-called assignment rules. I will show you what I mean with assignment rules, and it's really um, helpful to use them for the uh, for creating those assignment rules. But as I said, I will show you um, after th after this um, the meaning of the assignment rules. Then we have the multi-line text box. With the multi-line text box, you can also add unformatted uh, multi-line texts. Um, we have the page break. With the page break is, yeah, um, as the name already said, is um, you can force a page break on a certain point of of your doc document. And um, for example, if um, if if the documentation is so complex and so long, then we recommend to add a page break maybe after um, after each chapter of the first level. Then we have the list of sub objects. So also if your documentation is really um, complex and you have a lot of entities in it, then um, it's smart to add such a list of entities into the structure. So you can, for example, um, display all the entities of the scenario um, in this list. And then it's also really helpful if the table of content is not enough. So you can do this for BW, for BO entities, for HANA entities, and for third-party entities. And this is also a big advantage of scenarios. You can add into a scenario entities of BW, um, BO, HANA, and also the third from the third-party components. So you can combine um, all of the entities of all components. And that's the reason why you can um, create a holistic documentation. Okay, the last thing is the um, Office Word document. So you can also add this one here. As I already said, um, you have the possibility to integrate, for example, old, old guys or older documentation to the new documentation. So these are the possibilities that you have um, to, um, to create your structure and to add content to the, to the um, Duku performer and to the scenario. And the next step is I, um, the next step I will show you how you can work with the assignment rule. For example, this is my InfoCube um, chapter. So all InfoCubes should be um, listed here below this um, chapter. And what I can do then is I can open the content menu and then I can create so-called assignment rules. So um, the sub-objects that co uh, correspondent, uh, correspond to the defined rules are automatically assigned to the structure item if you insert them to the scenario. So the assignment rules are applied if sub-objects are integrated here in this context. So um, if you go on to entities and select an entity type, or, and this is more important, if you um, integrate entities outside of the Duku performer. And I will show you um, all possibilities um, to insert entities outside of the Duku performer. So here I can, for example, say match object type and please insert all info cubes um, into this chapter. And I can apply this. I can also do this with, for example, layer. I can also um, the, um, I can also do this with a namespace, with a specific namespace, and then I can apply this, and then you will see that here's um, that um, InfoCube icon appears, and um, if I then add entities to this to this um, scenario, for example, then the InfoCube will be below this chapter because the rule worked. But as I said before, it's really smart to create first a structure without entities and um, afterwards, because afterwards I can transform this to, uh, um, to a scenario template. And this is what I will do next, because I will save this scenario, I will close it, and then I can go on clone scenario, I can say clone as a template, I can click on save, and then um, I can, if I create a new application or a new scenario, I can use this defined structure um, as, a, as the base um, of the new scenario. And then it's from, then I don't have to um, recreate the structure once again. So this is a recommended workflow, how you can easily um, avoid uh, creating the structure once again. So I will delete this scenario because this was just an example. And I will create a new scenario. Um, it will be called um, BWMM per PJ02. 
this will also be the this will also be the technical name. I will also add here, for example, an EN because this is the English description. Um, for me, the German language is also relevant, so I will also add this one with the E. And then I will select a template. So this is the place where you can select a created template. So in this case, I will select this one, BWPJ template, and I will create this scenario. So then I can open this scenario via double click and um, as you can see, I already um, the structure is already there. So I don't have to rebuild this scenario. Everything is already there. I already um, I already um, created the the um, scenario rules. So everything is here, and I don't have to, I don't have to do this once again. The next thing is I would like to show you the different modes. So. We have um, the edit mode and the overview mode. So in the edit mode, you have the possibility to add the structure items. You can create the structure of your scenario. And in the overview mode, you can then um, you can then display a preview. So you can um, check how it how this how the scenario would look like. But um, you won't see you won't see the technical um, information of entities because we always go into in real time into your system and add all the um, information, all the technical information to the scenario in, uh, into in, into the documentation in real time. So we here now see all um, how the scenario now looks like. And the next thing is. Um, um, I would like to add entities to the scenario, but because currently there are um, only chapters, text chapters, and I will now, um, and also content, but will, I will also, of course, add entities um, and application-specific entities to this scenario. So therefore, I will, I will close this, and I will open, I will also close this, I don't need this. I will search for, uh, on a composite provider, I can search here in Entity Grid. I can also execute a multi-line search here via the multi-line filter, and then I will display the data flow of this HANA composite provider. So now I see the data flow, and what I can do then is I can um, select all the um, elements of this data flow. I can um, open the context menu. I can go to scenario assignment and usage. Then I can select the um, scenario that I created before. So this one, I can click on assign. And this is a really, really um, quick way to insert entities into your scenarios. So we are the, um, we are the data flow. So then I close this. The next thing is I would like to add also the used um, process chains into this um, into this <clears throat> into this scenario, and therefore I will um, start this. Um, therefore I will um, here click here and, and execute a process chain analysis, <clears throat> and then I will also add them. Okay, so now we see the used process chains, and this is also a quick way. I can click here on assign unassigned process chains to scenario. Once again, I select the my scenario, and now they are also part of the documentation. So I will open this documentation once again, and you will see that this scenario um, that the scenario was has now entities in it. So now um, you see we have here the transformations. We don't need them because they will also be shown in the documentation of the HANA composite provider. So as you can see now, we have the um, on this level where you see the HANA composite provider. Here you see the advanced DSOs, the data sources, and now I will also add the other the other entities um, to the scenario. Here are the process chains. So therefore now I save this once again. And I close this, and now I go, for example, to the relations. I will copy this, the name of this HANA composite provider. I go to relations, then I click on calculated key figures and restricted key figures. I, I find this um, HCP HANA composite provider, and then um, the Doku performer displayed all, um, all the calculated key figure and restricted key figures that are based on the HANA composite provider. 
So this is also a really quick way to um, find um, connections between um, to find connections between entities, and um, then I can execute this quick assignment. So I can um, click here. This is the scenario that is needed. I click on it, and then I will also assign these entities to the to the um, scenario. And in the last step, I will also um, add some other entities that are relevant for this project. So for example, therefore I can use this multi-line filter and then this is another possibility to insert entities to a scenario and to find entities. I can go to assign scenario and click here. Okay, so now I assigned all my, um, all my entities to the scenario. And if we check the scenario once again, then we see that now that we have now all in all chapters, you can find entities. So variables, we have the key figures, we info objects, we have um, calculated key figures and so on. And another really um, exciting thing is that you can also use some special settings. So for example, if you if you go to a HANA composite provider or if you click um, on a on an entity with a data flow, then you see that you have the possibility to export also the data flow. So this is also a possibility. So a data flow will be part of the documentation. You can also decide whether you like to export the comments. So if I, if I deselect this one, then we don't see the comment that I added to the uh, HANA Composite Provider. Or the same, you can do, do this with the technical documentation. So you can decide whether you like to see all the technical documentation of, um, of, the, of this entity. Um, I will also use these two options to um, add another HANA Composite Provider. Yeah. So I will at this HANA composite provider once again, but this time on on this level, for example. And on this level, I will see the data flow of the corresponding info provider, and I only want to see um, the data flow itself. So in this case, I want something like a quick overview about the data flow of the HANA composite provider, and then I can um, do this with this settings. But I don't need the comments, and I don't need the technical documentation. Um, these uh, aspects should be considered on this um, in this HANA Composite Provider documentation. So the next thing you can do. So first of all, let's take um, let's have a quick look how this um, how this looked like how this looks like. So this would be the documentation. I will show you this now. This would be the documentation, and here you see we have this data flow. So this is the HANA Composite Provider that I inserted, and you see we have here now the data flow. And we have also, for example, we analyze the DTPs. And um, this is also what you can do. So this is something like the first quick overview, but we don't see the technical documentation, but we see it here on this level. So this is the same HANA composite provider, but here we have the technical documentation. And um, we also have the, if I use another one, we also see that we, um, that we have here the comment that I added before. Okay. I also there are also some special settings for other entities. So the network setting is one of it. Then you can also um, decide whether you like to um, whether you like to, whether you like to resolve the formula for the calculated key figures. You can also um, so you can click this here, this one, this setting. You can also decide whether you like to um, export an overview of the called subchains and. Last but not least, you can decide whether you like to um, display the assigned users in this authorization um, entity. Okay, so now I created this um, this entity, and if I go to export the scenario, then you see that there are some settings variants, some variants that you can um, that you can consider. And I will show you how you can create all the variants because now I created my scenario, then I want to export it. But the question is then. Um, for which target group. So um, there are many possibilities to export a scenario um, target group orient oriented and I will show you how it works. So therefore I go back to my presentation.
And okay, how can you, um, how do you create different types of documentation for different target groups? So um, as you can see in the header, one scenario supports many target groups. And this is the big advantage of the scenarios. You can, um, you only have to build one scenario and it, and it supports numerous um, target groups. So the considerations first is um, which target groups exist at all. So um, who should actually consume the documentation and how should the content of the documentation vary per target group? So the next question is which language is, language is relevant for the respective target group? And um, also what appearance and what um, a corporate design should the document have for the respective target group. So as you can see here, we have some target groups and different um, different aspects that are important for the target group. So we have, for example, IT with a really technical and detailed documentation. We have business with a redu reduced technical um, documentation. And this is what you can do with the document performer really easy. So what are the possibilities? So first of all, there are many aspects that can vary per target group. And here's an example of two variants regarding the content. So for example, you can create two variants, the overview variant and the detailed variant. So the overview variant should cover at least 80% of all requirements, of all documentation requirements. And then we have the detailed variant, and this one should cover the additional requirements. If you really need some special, um, some special information, this is something for the IT, for example. And um, these variants refer to the technical information and the comments. So I will show you this, um, the comment, and the, um, I will present you this uh, on the next slides. And as you see, um, only one scenario must be created and then different variants can be exported. So it's really smart to create a scenario with the highest level of detail because restrictions can be implemented afterwards to adjust the level of detail. Then we have the word template. It can be used to display the appearance or the corporate design. And it makes same sense to create templates for the several languages, so the languages that need it. And for example, one template per, per department. Then we have the languages. Um, in this webinar, the topic language has been mentioned several times. And in the context of creating comments or common templates or the scenarios, um, so the relevant languages should be considered and maintained um, during the creation of these aspects. And this makes it easier to create multilingual um, documentations later. Then we have the special settings. As I said, we can export the entire documentation. We can integrate a data flow. We can resolve formula of calculated key, calculated key figures and so on. And last but not least, the export source. So it makes sense to start documenting as early as possible. So we recommend to start already in the development phase. And it's easier to um, uh, successfully document the knowledge than to rework and understand everything after the project. So this is really hard to, um, to um, add everything that is important. So you can start to create your scenario in the development phase and adding the objects of the developing system to the scenario. And um, when the development is complete, completely done and, and if you transported everything to the productive system, you can create the full application documentation with your scenario. And therefore you just have to um, choose the productive system option in the checkbox, which I will show you. Okay, so now I will quickly show you the different variants. So first of all, you have your scenario and um, then you have, you created comment template, the comment template for, um, the, for, the, for the entity types, for the different entity types. And with the comment variant, you have the possibility to restrict the chapters, to ignore chapters for uh, export. Then you have, for example, a query in your scenario with all the related um, reporting elements. And with the settings variant, you can um, say, okay, I don't need the restricted uh, key figure A and I don't need the variables in my documentation. So they should also be ignored during the export. And then you have the word template. And as I said before, you have the possibility to add your corporate design. And yes, so let's 
have another look on the um, on the settings variant. So as you see here, you have your query and your subsystem. We go if you create a documentation and if you selected the settings variant and user variant, then we go into your subsystem during an export. We um, we um, um, we get all the all this um, filter variable structures, free characteristics, all the elements. Uh, we take them and then we only display um, the the entities that are that are also selected in the in the settings variant. So in this case, we ignore the filter variables and structures, for example. We can also say please ignore the coding in the settings variant and user variant because maybe the business documentation um, is the wrong place for coding because it's just confusing for the for the one who consumed this documentation. So you can select the settings variant here. You can click on settings variant. Um, these are the two um, settings variants that we um, that we deliver you during the installation, and we rec recommend you that you uh, don't you shouldn't delete them because you can create new settings variant based on these um, based on um, for example the IT standard documentation. It's a really detailed um, settings variant, and then you just can say okay, we don't need the variables here, we don't need the uh, customer exit coding for this um, for this variant, and you can then save this. And yeah, then you will ignore these elements. Then you have the comment variant. So with the comment variant, you have the also the possibility to ignore the um, some specific chapters. For example, here we have chapters. So we added comment um, into the chapter A, B, C um, that are really um, IT specific, um, and um, we don't want to have the, these comments in our end user documentation. So therefore, there is also restriction on this level, and we won't um, add the IT chapters to the documentation. This is the place where you can um, where you can create the comment templates, as I already showed to you, and this is the place where you can add these restrictions. So you can create a new comment variant, and then you can just say, okay, in this comment variant, I don't want to have chapter A, B, C, and then you can select them uh, before you start your export. Okay, and then we have the word template. You have the possibility to add the word templates local, um, and you can then um, upload them to the global database, to Google Performer database, and then our user can then use this word template. You can also add those bookmarks into your word template, and they will be filled with values when the documentation is generated automatically. So just one thing in the Google Performer, as I said, if you click on export scenario then you see the settings and here you find all of these things you see the settings variant you can decide here for example i will select the it overview um, settings variant and then i select the um, the word template in this case english because the target group um, is um, only uh, speaks english then the comment variant i don't need um, i only need business comments then the documentation language the comment language the version and the export source so here's the place where you can select everything and afterwards you can um, you can um, compare the scenarios, for example, we I, I exported two versions. Um, the first version is the um, all all details version of the scenario. The second one is the overview version. And as you can see, for example, on this level, you see we have here the the comments. So I um, and on this level, you see that I used a certain comment variant where I said, okay, we don't need the objective in our HANA, uh, on, in HANA composite providers. So this is the reason why we ignore this comment during the export. Okay, and then as you also see, if we scroll a little bit down, we see that we have here the mapping of elements. And after this, in the detailed variant, we also um, sh we also document all info objects specifically here with an own table. So let's come now to the end. So a quick summary before we before I um, before we come to the end. So um, first of all, you need to um, you need to think about um, the information that is worth to be documented, and also at which inf at which information level is this information located. Then 
you can use, for example, you can synchronize your entities, you can create third-party entities, you can define common templates, you can add business and technical comments to the entities. In the next step, you can, for example, create um, a logical scenario folder structure. You can create scenario templates that contain reusable content. You can create scenario based on the scenario template. And um, you can use all the different variants um, to create target specific, um, target group specific um, entity, um, target group specific documentations. And this is how you can get this result. And as a little reminder, if you have technical problems or if you have a nice idea for a new function, then you can visit our help desk. And um, you can find an overview of the future webinars on our website. So here on our website, you can simply register, re re register, for, uh, register for other um, webinars. And yes, if you want to try it yourself, if there were functions of certain modules that have uh, that I showed to you, and if you find them exciting and haven't licensed, licensed them yet, um, you're welcome to contact us. We can do an individual webinar in which I can show you the function live. You can also test all functionalities of Duco Performer for 60 days in a trial phase. We are also always very pleased when we have the opportunity to present um, the functions um, on site at your system so that you can see the advantages of the Duco Performer directly. And yes, this brings us to the end. I hope I was able to show you the exciting features today and give you an understanding um, of the connection between certain functions. Thanks for your attention. I hope to see you again at the future webinar. Um, for example, next week when I show the uh, when I show how Duco Performer supports um, housekeeping activities. And okay, I wish you a nice day. Goodbye.